Hello, I'm Nick Park from Evangelical Alliance Ireland and this is our weekly message. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And I'm absolutely delighted that I'm joined today by Paul Boyle. Uh, Paul, delighted to have you with us. And of course, uh, most people that know you, it's going to be through your work down through the years with CCYM, with uh, Chrysalis Children's and Youth Ministry. And uh, I know you've been doing that for years. I mean, I've been pastoring Solid Rock Drogheda for 28 years. And when I arrived in Drogheda, first thing I heard about was the camps, about what you guys were doing. So um, tell, tell us a bit about how the whole Chrysalis camps came about. The camps were going back in the 80s. A lot of little Christian fellowships and house fellowships uh, were having family camps. And they were small, independent, interdenominational churches. And that's how I met Margie and her sister Heather. And we were involved with these camps, working with the children and the families. And then as the 80s progressed, as you realised and, and you know, um, a lot of the little house groups and independent churches started to get annexed and started to draw lines in the sand about whether they wanted to be charismatic or Pentecostal or Baptist or independent. And so a lot of the adults who were meeting at these camps no longer wanted to meet because of their differences, which left a big vacuum for the children who we felt were a minority in a minority. So the mantle of the camps then fell with Margie, myself and Heather and uh, we picked it up and for the first couple of years we struggled because we didn't think we were qualified or had the qualifications to be ministers but then after a couple of years we realised that God was calling us to do something, a work and so we did what everybody else did back in the day. We said, well, we have to get a vision and we have to get a policy. And because myself and Margie were in childcare, we were working with the ISPCC at that stage and Heather was a nurse. We knew how important it was to write things down and to have policies. But we tried to follow all the big mainline churches policies and we spent three nights sifting through these policies and documents and vision statements and realised none of those things fit it. And after three nights, we were getting very frustrated, at which point I said to Margie, come on, Margie, this is your baby. What, what do you see? And that night she said, I just want to see children saved, mm -hmm. set free, and walking in God's love. At which point myself and Heather looked at each other and said, write that down. That's, that's the vision. <laughs> and that has been the vision for 30 years that was 1991 and it's as simple as that we are an interdenominational team of Christians and we've only changed the statement once we've changed one word and we used to say we were an interdenominational team of Christians from different churches but we changed one word and we said we're an interdenominational team of Christians from differing mm -hmm. churches and the key for us was that we were united in one thing. We wanted to see children saved and set free and walking in God's love. And it didn't matter where we were coming from or what our denominations were. And we could differ on things, mm -hmm. but we were all in agreement about one thing. We wanted to see children come to the camps. We wanted to see them learn about God's plan, see that it's in God's word, question it. And that was a key for us to teach children to question and ask the right questions so they could get the right answers. So that's what we were doing back in 1991. And the reason we called it Chrysalis, there was a book in Margie's mother's bookshelf and it was one of those penguin books on butterflies. Yeah. And I used to take it down every evening and would look at it and all the different species and all the different types. But that whole thing of a caterpillar going into a cocoon, going into a chrysalis, mm -hmm and coming out the other side as a butterfly. And we thought that was indicative of what we were doing at the camps. It was a safe place. It was a hidden work at times. And not the, not the prettiest either, that transitional, that metamorphosis. Yeah. But we felt that chrysalis really 
explained what it was we were trying to do at a camp, a hidden work, a transformational work, but only a work that God could do. And so hopefully that explains a little bit about where we were coming from. Yeah. Now, I think you're incredibly wise with that. I mean, I'll be honest with you, all those years ago, uh, as a church planter in Drogheda, uh, deep down, I, I probably really wanted Chrysalis to hook up with Solid Rock and, and stuff like that. And, and looking back, I just realized that would have been a disaster because you guys were reaching people that we were never reaching. And, mm -hmm. and we would even have people then over the years come in and, and get saved and uh, or rededicate their lives to the Lord. And they would say, you know what, all these years ago, I, I went, do you, uh, do you remember the camps? I went to one of the camps and this yes. kind of thing. So the impact it's had on people's lives that would never maybe have dark darkened the door of a church like Solid yes. Rock in the first place. Uh, Chrysalis was able to just reach them as children. Uh, one of the parts of the vision statement says that we want to see children returning back to their own churches mm -hmm. encouraged and strengthened and with an ability then to share God's love with our family and friends and that was the key yeah because people could send their children knowing that they weren't being uh, we were trying to change them from we're being proselytized that, I know yeah. I hate these words <laughs> but, I do, I do hate these word. <laughs> but we, we weren't fishing yeah. and we weren't trying to get them to leave uh, one building to go to another mm. building uh, and I know for some people it's important to them what door they walk through on a Sunday but for us working with the children it that was never an issue in all the years myself and Mary would always joke and say never once did one child say to another child what church do you go to it was never an issue and also now what's really encouraging is we we're seeing children who are now parents and their children coming and then we have volunteers who are grannies and granddads watching their grandchildren coming to camp so it's been a it's been a real family experience mm -hmm. a community experience it's you would understand this we're very good at times in telling people how to become a Christian mm -hmm. and what they need to do to become a Christian but that's not what the camps are all about part of it is but the other part of the camp is showing the children what it is to be a Christian yeah and that's why I think the camps are so popular I think that's why we get the volunteers we get because there is that sense of community that sense of living the Christian life I, and Margie and I used to always say, for us, even though it wouldn't be for other people, it was a slice of heaven. And, and the family thing, you've mentioned that phrase a couple of times, and I think that really was true, uh, and, and of your workers and volunteers as well, because, I mean, I'm thinking of uh, big Pat Bagnall that's gone to be with the Lord now, and, and Pat was a member of our church at Solid Rock for years, and Pat loved the Solid Rock, he served as an usher and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and Pat loved his church. But I'll be honest with you, when Pat started talking about Chrysalis and the camps, there was a change in the language and it had gone from church to, to family, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, it was, we would sometimes say the curse of Chrysalis <laughs> is that when we're in people's company, we just seem to talk about the camps. And I'm sure people got bored and got tired listening to us. So the camps this and we did that and we're doing this. But when you see children, from so many different backgrounds and so many different needs. I'm going to use words that may be very needy to yeah. very blessed, yeah. very vulnerable to very comfortable mm -hmm. children. And yet when they're put together, they're all treated the exact same way. And it does become a family. And uh, Pat and Margie, we would have seen all of us as volunteers and workers they became an extension of our own family and so we truly did love each other and do love each other and the existing team that's there now they are people that would have grown up through the camps that then would have come through as volunteers and are now the actual board and making the decisions yeah and that's a real family mm -hmm. and that's really encouraging to see and you know what i mean you you say maybe people would have got fed up of 
talking about chrysalis. And do you know what? Maybe when I was a, a young, much younger, much more immature pastor, I would have got fed up of that for the likes of Pat. But as I as I grew older and wiser, I hope I uh, I began to realise that Pat that I began to actually wish that every other member of the church was excited about something in their Christian life as Pat was about chrysalis. And that our church would be a better church if people yes. were excited about even, you know, about working with a ministry or an outreach or something mm-hmm. like that. But but look, your I mean, what would be some of your favourite memories over the years? Some of the significant things that you know you've watched happening through through CCYM. The there's so many facets to it. On a personal note, myself and Margie love teaching, mm-hmm. love breaking up. The, the gospel stories and uh, making them visual uh, 3D gospel we used to call it so that was always fun being able to take props and go into a room with children and young people and talk straight and talk about candles or talk about parables or talk about light or talk about stones and actually take the physical things in and explain what the verses mean and how they work and how they link. But I used to like to write stories mm-hmm. and Margie used to love to tell stories. So when I first met Margie, when I first, I was uh, going through a tough time and my brother-in-law and sister said, come to a camp. This is when it was before it was Chrysalis. Mm-hmm and our daughters are in a fancy dress just come and I said oh it's not born again Christians is it and they said yeah and I said oh so I went and I saw the fancy dress parade and then they said no we're not going just yet we, we have to go into the hall and I was like oh please no <laughs> they're gonna try to hook me into this but when I went in there was about a hundred children sitting there and there was this lady up at the front and it was Margie and she had a guitar and she sang a few choruses and then she proceeded to tell a story to the children and she had them in the palm of her hand mm-hmm. and I was watching the interaction and I was watching Margie and I remember saying at the time God whatever she has that's what I want whatever that gift is that's what I want and uh, I joked at Margie's funeral at the eulogy I said I didn't realize that that day when I prayed that prayer I was actually going to get her yeah. as well. So she was a storyteller and she had run out of stories to tell. And so in 1992 and in 1991, she said, uh, I have no more stories to tell. I've done the cycle. I've done the Corrie ten Bones, the hiding place, and I've done Brother Andrew. And she'd done a few other ones. And I said, well, I'll write you one. Mm-hmm. She said, would you write me one? I said, I'll write you one. So I wrote the first one, which was called Island in the Sun, S-O-N. And it was from Genesis to Revelations, and we just acted it out every night. But that kicked off a whole new uh, facet of CCYM, which was teaching in the teaching room in the morning and drama at night. And every night we would get up and do 30 minutes, an episode. Not the same thing. Every night it was a different episode. But to be able to link the story in the morning, or the teaching in the morning with the story in the evening, we had this overlap. And so in the teaching, we could refer to the drama, and in the drama, we could refer to the teaching. So we got a double whammy with the kids. And then an awful lot of the children fell in love with the theatrics of it. And the team got bigger. Then we had Greg coming in with his light kit, and Mac coming in with his recording studio the praise team and that that's a whole different area as well so for me personally it was teaching and drama but it's the other areas in camp too that are equally important there's there's games there's crafts there's praise and worship and it is what it is and one of the things that we we did say when we were doing camps was tell the kids what they're doing and just do that Mm -hmm. i've been to camps where to do a morning session and there'd be praise and there'd be teaching and there'd be a bit more praise and there'd be puppets and there'd be a quiz and before you knew it the kids had been sitting for nearly two hours yeah but in the camps what myself and Margie wanted was that in out in out change and change and change and so when they came to teaching for half an hour that's all it was 
-hmm. they knew when it started they knew when it finished when they went to praise they knew when it started and they knew when it finished just like when you go to lunch you know when it starts and you know when dessert's coming and that's that that was one of the things that we learned over the years in the camps with the children uh, this excitement about what's next yeah. what are we doing next um, and, th and that's that would be some of the things that I would remember the most for me would be I've written seven dramas with the team we've performed some on camera and most of them live on stage they're magical moments when you're up there and you just have this sea of children looking at you connecting with you connecting with your characters connecting with the gospel but not knowing that what they're connecting with is the gospel yeah it was really exciting yeah and, and there was a creativity you know just you're talking about the dramas you're talking about the stories you're talking about i mean the worship you had ian and these great kids songs just yeah i mean and i would in, in drada i mean i would go onto the likes of money more estate and he, here are these kids and they're singing the songs that they've learned at the camp <laughs> fantastic now of course you and you and margie ended up telling and living a love story mm -hmm. for quite a few how many years we married uh, Margie passed away the week before our 25th wedding yeah. anniversary Man. so we were friends for about six seven years and uh, best friends mm -hmm. and I had dated one or two other people and uh, we had never realized that there was something between us and then one day it just twigged, why am I looking here or here when <laughs> what God has gifted me is right here. Yeah. And we never regret it. We, we had a huge adventure. I, mm -hmm. it, it was the best, best of times. We loved it. Loved every minute. And when I say adventure, every time we would finish a camp or an event, we'd be usually the last ones driving out of Drewstown or Drawley Grammar School. And as we'd get to the gate, we'd stop the car and we'd look at each other and we'd go next because it was always next yeah and that was the adventure for us and uh, we just loved it I just loved her and she loved me mm -hmm. and it was just so it was very very special I, I'm the blessed one yeah now of course uh, I mean everyone could see how much the two of you loved each other you know it was quite obvious you loved each other deeply and I know that uh, losing Margie has been tremendously painful and uh, I remember, you know, I remember somebody saying a while ago, and I've been thinking about this more even as I and Janice get older, you know, that every good, every love story, every true love story ends in heartbreak, you know, and uh, the best, the best way for it to finish in heartbreak is to lose one of, the, you know, because the other way of heartbreak, of course, would be to split up, you know, mm, so yes. that, you know, being in love means that heartbreak there but I, but I know this has been a painful time and and it's all happened sort of you had your what your last christmas camp in 2019 that's right and then it's also in 2019 that margie got sick she got sick in february she was diagnosed with a brain tumor mm -hmm. uh, in january and she was operated on uh, within a week we were very 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 blessed that way she got diagnosed and operated on yeah. uh, and they got 80 percent of of the tumor but uh, it just it was it was um, aggressive mm -hmm. but we got an extra 13 months yeah uh, Heather Margie's sister took time off work she was a nurse and she had started CCYM with us so mm -hmm. we used to always say if if myself and Margie were the parents of CCYM Heather was the midwife right. but she was a midwife but when um, when Margie took sick, Heather took time off and came. That was a real special time. So as family, we had 13 months together. Mm -hmm. um, directly after Margie's funeral, which was February, we went into our first lockdown. Yeah. So we were very blessed that Margie had the celebration and the send off that she so deserved having run the race. I was in France recently and the lady, Heather, a good friend of ours who played the piano at Margie's funeral, said, Paul, I have played at over 500 funerals and I've never been to a funeral mm -hmm. like that. And that was so encouraging because we wanted that funeral to be a celebration. 
uh, to be part of the love story because what God had given us and has given us is so so special I miss her every day I think about her every day I I want to keep going mm -hmm. we promised each other that whichever one of us went home first the other one would continue but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be with CCYM yeah. because CCYM is a team and it's a family and it's 30 years old and it's mm -hmm. old enough to make its own decisions now and the people that are there now are good people yeah. they're solid people I know your church is called Solid Rock but they are solid in him and uh, that's part of the love story that myself and Margie had we always wanted to make sure that when the time came that we could take our hands away mm -hmm. and let God continue to do what he wants to do and I'm excited I, I still get a chance to teach and to share the 3D gospel yeah. and to work with children and young people and families I, I get the opportunity to do family services and that's really important to me because it's teaching children with adults and then putting the onus back on the adults to say now you need to go and talk to your children about what you've just heard Yeah, uh, it's not about the children repeating what they've just heard to make sure that I sound good it's about you talking to them about what we've discussed and I know Margie if it was the other way around that's exactly what Margie would be doing as well mm -hmm. now you, you've you guys are doing video before any churches really were doing any kind of video and you've got a whole load of archive material and footage and I think you're working on some of that yeah. now aren't you that's right I got my first camera back in 1993 uh, Somebody loaned us a camera in 1991. I couldn't afford a camera back in 1991. <laughs> but this family loaned us a camera and I started to take video footage. And uh, I just fell in love. Well, I, I was always in love with cinema anyway. But uh, I started to video. And in 1993, I bought my own Sony 8mm. And the rest is literally history. I just never stopped filming. And uh, we've got thousands of hours of footage Mm -hmm. and archives that I'm hoping to digitise uh, starting this winter mm -hmm. and to try and get it up on the CCYM website and make it available to families and some people are going to be very surprised some people are going to be very shocked <laughs> very embarrassed, <laughs> very embarrassed. <laughs> but it's it's good and it's 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 lovely to see uh, these young boys and girls for example there's a wedding coming up in two weeks from now Mm -hmm. and it's two leaders who were campers who are now getting married and their love story starts in CCYM and continues and we have a number of people who've actually met who, who played together as campers never known that they were there mm -hmm. and then come back years later as volunteers and then suddenly connect <laughs> And so we, we have a lot of love stories, yeah. which is mm -hmm. good. Now, obviously, COVID affected all of us and Christmas had to, to go online, like all churches did and everything else, which thank God for it, but it, it wasn't the same. You know, no. what you guys do is very much about being in person. Now, now I know you've taken a step back now mm -hmm. or passed the baton on yes, as, as concerns leadership, but... Uh, after three years since the last time Chris Liss is going to have in-person camps again. It is very exciting and uh, yes we had to do it online and it kept the team together, it kept the connections with the children and the family. Unfortunately not the volunteers as much and that, that was the issue for mm. us this year because we've sort of lost our volunteer base over those two years. The numbers have gone down. So this year, the team have decided that they're going to have one camp this summer, a junior camp for six to eleven year olds, and the team and they just want to make sure that they have the right amount of volunteers to cover that. We didn't want to stretch ourselves uh, in case, but it's very exciting. It's going to be the first time they they had a reconnect day back at Easter, mm -hmm. which was to get the wheels in motion. But this is this is the full show yeah. this time it's a full week starts on a Sunday the 24th of July goes to Friday the 29th 
it's a residential camp it's from morning till night and uh, they've got a great program lined up uh, Aoife is going to be doing the teaching this year I think Max is going to be helping out with some puppet work Ian and the team have some new songs um, as you'd expect from oh, Ian always, always and it's, it's, it's lovely it's a lovely mix of old and new but there's right. always the, the, the joy of trying something new and you're still involved as a volunteer, but, a, but but Ian is now director. Is that Ian uh, would be Ian would be one of the most senior on the board. Mm -hmm. We've always said that uh, the board we're there to to keep an eye on each other. We're always yeah. account, we have to be accountable. Mm -hmm. um, all of us have our own churches, which is really important. That like I have a pastor myself, and Margaret a pastor. We always felt that was really important that you are accountable. To someone mm -hmm. in a spiritual role and that was important so the board is I think there's a board of eight or nine there at the moment they're committed they they submit one to another there's seniority in the sense of how long they've been there but there's a lot of respect there is a lot of respect and, and different people with different talents and different skills and and that, that was one of the beauties of CCYM the the wiggle room. Uh, one one uh, friend came over from America to watch myself and Margie teach one time, and he would never seen us do it before. And he said, "I love the way you and your wife danced in the teaching." And what he mm -hmm. was trying to describe was how we passed over different parts of the teaching to each other. And he said it was almost like a dance. And I think that's what CCYM is as well. There's a lot. There's craft team. There's games teams praise teams and people say oh there's loads of teams but that's what it is it's all about giving space and room to each other yeah wow so let's just remind us the details again for the camp this year this year the CCYM camp is in July it's from Sunday the 24th of July to Friday the 29th of July it costs 190 euro to send the child to camp and there are discounts available for families. You can book online, and the website is www.ccymireland.com. And also to say that we do have a Facebook page, and if you just want to get a glimpse or an idea of what the activities and what sort of things the children and the young people are doing at camp, I would really encourage you to go to the Facebook and go through some of the photo galleries. You'll get a real sense of what the team is about and what the camps are about. Wonderful, wonderful. So ccymireland.com and the Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash CCYM Ireland. Okay, CCYM Ireland again. Okay, that fantastic. Is. That's brilliant, Paul. Look, thanks so much for coming I in and sharing with us.